GDP is the number that you hear on the news to talk about how the economy is doing. In this lecture, we're going to talk about what counts towards GDP. How do we measure the macro economy with GDP? GDP counts the total market value of all final goods and services produced within a country during a time period. Dollars are the common denominator of GDP. GDP is measured in dollars. It measures the amount that purchasers pay for goods. One metaphor that helps you understand what GDP is, is this difference between a flow and a stock. So we can think about this with a filling of a tub of water, right? And so the flow is what is coming out of the faucet. It's what's new and coming out of the faucet and into the tub. What's currently in the tub is the stock, the stock of water that already exists. Now, the flow might be coming quite quickly and the stock might be quite low or the stock might be quite high. We don't know. What we're measuring with GDP is just the flow during a time period. How much new is coming out of the faucet? So GDP is designed to measure the amount of production generated during a time period and not the total wealth of the economy, how much stock has accumulated. GDP is like a meter that keeps track of production or of the flow coming out of the faucet, not a total measure of the amount of wealth or exchanges that have already taken place and have been built up over time. So a stock is a quantity measured at a given point in time. It's saying how much is already in the tub. Whereas a flow is what GDP is all about. A flow is a measure of a quantity during a certain time period. How much is flowing out of that faucet and being added to the stock? So if we think about GDP's definition, the total market value of all final goods and services produced within a country during a time period, we have to make sure that we avoid one serious problem, the problem of double counting. So to think about the problem of double counting, we can think about a grocery store selling some bread. And what happens is first the farmer sells wheat for like 30 cents, right, to the miller. And when the miller buys this wheat for 30 cents, then they turn it into flour. And now the miller can sell that flour for 65 cents. And then the miller, after they sell this flour to the baker, the baker can turn the flour into bread and the baker can sell to the grocery store the loaf of bread for 90 cents and then the grocery store brings the bread together with other groceries and can sell this loaf of bread for a dollar to the consumer if we add all of these values up if we count the 30 cents the 65 cents the 90 cents and the dollar we could think that we had these sales of two dollars and 85 cents right so we have 30 plus 65 plus 95 uh, plus this dollar we end up with two dollars and 85 cents this is not what we want to count towards gdp we only want to count the value added so that if something is sold we're not double counting the value you can see that part of the miller's sell sale of the flour Part of that is the farmer's wheat, the 30 cents of value that the farmer added towards the wheat. And so the miller only actually adds 35 additional cents to the value of this bread. And then the baker, while the baker sells the bread for 90 cents, the baker is only really adding 25 cents of value. And so we can think about this and we can go through and we can think about what we're trying to measure is just the value added. And so in order to measure that and to make this a little bit easier, all we have to really do is look at the final product, look at the value added of the final product. So we're only going to count a good when it is a final product that is actually being sold. Sales at intermediate stages of production are not counted as their va value is embodied within the final user goods value. So you can kind of think of GDP as like ringing up your groceries at a supermarket. If you buy eggs, these count. If you buy flour, that counts. But if you buy a cake, 
you don't count the value of the cake and then also the, co the cost of the eggs and then also the cost of the flour that went into making that cake. You would be double counting that element of the cake, right? The cost of the eggs and the flour. But if you buy eggs separately and you're gonna just consume eggs as a final good, yeah, that counts. If you buy flour, yeah, that counts. But if you buy a cake, you don't count the cost of the cake and then the cost of the flour that went into the cake and the cost of the eggs that went into the cake as well. So we're primarily going to use GDP and that's going to be the focus here, but we also want to introduce a helpful kind of very similar measure called GNP. So GDP is gross domestic product, whereas GNP is gross national product. The big difference between GDP and GNP is kind of what measurement it's focusing on. GDP is measuring what happens within a country's border. And GNP is measuring the production of the citizens of that country. So GNP counts the total market value of all final goods and services produced by the citizens of a country during a time period whereas GDP counts the total market value of all final goods and services produced within a country during that time period. GDP, gross domestic product, is the most widely used indicator of economic performance. What counts towards GDP? GDP counts production, right? So if we are producing something within our country, that is something we wanna focus on is counting towards GDP. Now. Financial transactions and income transfers are not counted because they don't reflect actual production, something being created. So you can imagine a financial transaction. So if you just take out a loan or buy a bond or buy some stocks, what has really happened is that not that we have created new production. So say I buy some stock in a company called Apple. Right? So if I buy stock in a company called Apple, what really has happened is we haven't produced anything new. We've just transferred some of the, uh, the, the payoff to if production happens to me. I have invested into that future. Right? So that is just a transfer of who is owning the financial asset of this investment in the Apple company. Or you can think of transfer payments also. These should be excluded. They don't reflect actual production. If I get a social security payment, this isn't new production that has occurred. It's merely just a transfer of wealth from one person to another, right? And so we collect taxes, the government collects some taxes and then gives it out to people who are retired and collecting social security payments. We don't have this new production that has occurred. We've just taken some money from one place and given it to people in another place. So social security payments, welfare checks, and unemployment checks, those don't count as uh, gains towards GDP or, or uh, flows of production that we have here, right? And so that's one thing that people get kind of held up with in terms of production is that financial transactions and income transfers do not count. So what counts towards GDP? It's production, right? Production is a big element here. And then what distinguishes it from GNP is that it's geography, right? What counts towards GDP it has to be within the geographic borders of the country, right? So we're measuring all production within the borders, right? We have production and geography. And then the third element here that we really want to focus on is time. It's only during a certain time frame. So this gets back to the idea that we are not measuring a stock. We're just measuring a flow during a time period. What's the GDP during this quarter or during this year, right? Only those goods produced during the current period are counted towards GDP. What counts towards GNP is very similar, right? Again, we want to look at the production. Only transactions involving production count, not transfers. But now the difference is we don't count the geography. What we're looking at in GNP is the production by citizens of the country under consideration. So any production by a citizens of a country count towards that country's GNP, regardless of where they're doing this production. 
And then finally, the third element remains the same. Only those goods produced during the current period are counted towards GNP. To see if you have this difference between GNP and GDP, we have a question here from the Gortney textbook. The question is, British investors finance a skateboard manufacturing plant in Michigan. How will the construction influence GDP? And how will it influence GNP? And then how do the profits change GDP? And how do the profits change GNP? Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can come up with the answer. So it's pretty safe to assume that the construction and the corporate, corporate profits are taking place on United States soil. The geography is where this is happening in the United States, it's in Michigan. So the construction and the corporate profits will increase GDP as they take place here within our borders during this time period, and they are new production. Right? When it comes to GNP, however, GNP goes up only in the case of the construction. It's fairly safe to assume that the construction involves United States citizens, right? So there'll be some US citizens who are building the plant, right, uh, in Michigan. And so if we have some workers from the United States building this plant, then GNP is gonna go up because of the construction. But the profits will not increase the United States GNP because it is not going to go to citizens of the United States. These are British investors who are financing the manufacturing plant. So what happens? Construction and corporate profits increase GDP, but GNP only goes up with construction and not with the corporate profits. So what is GDP? GDP counts the total market value of all final goods and services produced within a country during a time period. It's the way that we measure the macro economy. It's highly related to a concept called GNP that looks at the citizens of a country. We're looking at the flow of the economy. We're trying to see how much is produced during this time period. We're gonna avoid double counting by only counting final goods and services. We're gonna look at production during a time period within our borders when it comes to GDP. For the next video in this series on GDP, click the video link here.